What is up people, Fire here from AwesomeDudes.com and before you start with this video, just quickly, I wanted to tell you that you can go on my website here, AwesomeDudes.com and then you can go under download free assets and there you can download free assets. Now these are commercial free assets, they are not assets for this tutorial. The assets for this tutorial, this dark cave, you can find, link is in the description below so you can get them from that link. But these are other commercial free assets that you can use to develop your own games and you have 3D assets, 2D assets, backgrounds and whatnot and I keep adding new and new stuff. So you should definitely check this out and yeah, enjoy the video. Our game is nearing its end. Next what we need to do is we need to initialize the variables when we first load our game and we're gonna do that in the gameplay controller and in order for us to achieve that we need to use our scene manager so here i'm gonna say using unity engine that scene management and now it is filling up or it is ending the statement for me because previously you saw when we first tried to use scene management it did not work for some reason so in order for this to work we need to create two functions which are available to us by mono develop or mono behavior. Every time I say mono develop because the name of this development environment is mono develop. So it's called void on enable. And we also have one more which is called void on disable. So here I'm going to say on enable and on disable. And what are these functions? Well, on enable is called right after the awake function and on disable is called if we call set active to false, so for example, here in our player walk, we are setting, let me just find it here. So no, it's not the player walks, player score. So here we are setting target game object set active to false. When that happens, our on this able will be called or if the game object is destroyed when we load the scene or leave the scene then we will also call on this able and here we are going to subscribe to a function and that we are going to do so i'm going to create that function here which i'm going to call void level finished loading and this function takes two parameters it is going to take the scene which i'm going to name scene and it is also going to take load scene mode which i'm going to call mode and here in on enable, we are going to say scene manager or scene, yeah, scene manager dot scene loaded plus equal to level finished loading. And I'm going to copy the code and paste it here. And here I'm going to say minus equal to level finished loading. Now, this is called delegation. If you're not sure, you can go on my YouTube channel, which is called Awesome Toots, and see the videos about delegation so that you will understand what that means. But in short, delegate is a way of us to have a task that we want to be executed, but we don't care who is going to execute that task. So the task is that we want to know which scene is loaded, and we don't care who is going to execute that task. But here we create a level finish loading, and the level finish loading function will execute the task. So again, the important thing is that the task will be executed, but who is going to execute it? We don't care. So now we are going to say if scene.name is equal to gameplay. So if the loaded scene is gameplay. So if we just loaded our gameplay scene, what we are going to do is we are going to test if our game manager, so game manager game manager dot instance dot player died game restarted and here i'm gonna say with an exclamation mark making what's after it the opposite so we're gonna test if the game is not restarted after player died meaning if the game is new so did we go from the main menu in our game if that's true then we're gonna say score is equal to zero and life score is equal to two because this is the initial value. Else, what we are gonna say is score is equal to game manager dot instance dot score and life score is equal to game manager dot instance dot life score because we are resetting it. And here, outside of the if else store, actually we can simply go here and do that. So now we're gonna say score text dot text is equal to and here i'm going to say x plus score and life score dot text so 
is it life text actually life text dot text is equal to x plus life score which is gonna set our initial score and i'm gonna show you that right now so when i go here in unity and I'm gonna go into our game play. So before we go in our main menu, notice when I run our game, notice here. So when I just run the game, notice that the score is zero for the player's lives. But what will happen if I go back to the main menu and here we say we have null reference, meaning it is trying to find the game manager, but it's not finding it. So now when I go from the start and click here, notice the score is two for the player. Why? Well, because we did not run the game after player has died. And that's why we are not setting or actually we run the game I got confused. So we did not run the game after player died. That's why we are setting the score to zero and life score to zero. When we don't run the game when the player has died, that means we are just starting the game. So we are starting it from the main menu. We did not restart our game. And when we restart our game, we are gonna, well, set it to the initial score. And after that, we're simply setting the score here to display it to the user. Now, in order for us to know when the player has died, we will need to create a function for that, but that we are gonna do in the next video. So this was just for setting up initial values when we first run our game, the next thing that we need to do, and with that, we are gonna wrap up our game, that is to save the score to the game manager when the player dies and reload that score and check if the player has no more lives left to continue, we will not reload the game and also end the game when we reach the door. So I will see you guys in the next video.